Yo, what's going on guys? This is Brennan again, and this is tutorial number 11. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about Passport JS's Google login strategy. First things first, if you haven't seen the Facebook login strategy in my previous tutorial, I suggest you do that because we're going to be copying, pasting a lot of code from the previous tutorial into this tutorial to make this video a little bit faster. Uh, but next up, all we're going to do is uh, install the uh, Passport JS uh, module so for Google so let's go ahead and npm install and the information for it is passport dash Google dash OAuth and then we'll slash ses, ha, dash dash save that we'll let that install and move on to the next part next we're gonna go ahead and edit a couple of the EJS files so we can use uh, the links on our index page to log into Google so let's go ahead and go to our index page We'll add a similar button to our Facebook login. This time it'll be a Google login and it'll go to uh, slash auth slash Google. We'll save that and then we'll move on to our profile page. And the profile page is going to have a similar uh, setup as the one we did with Facebook. So same kind of HTML setup here, except this time it's going to use our Google.id token email and name instead of our Facebook uh, token email and name. So you can check out that uh, HTML in the link below. Next, let's go ahead and navigate to our auth.js config file and we're going to make one for Google. So we'll go ahead and just copy our Facebook auth um, and add a new one down here. And instead it'll be called our Google auth. And then let's just remove this information so we can put our Google information in here shortly. Oops. And then we'll, I'm going to be showing you how to actually get this information. We can go ahead and just change this to uh, Google slash callback. So let's go find out how to get that information for our client ID and client secret from Google. Okay, the first step is to set up a Google account or a Gmail account if you don't already have one. Hopefully you guys already do. It's a great service to have. Um, but I want you to go ahead and navigate to console.developers.google.com and it will default to the slash project area. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna cr click uh, create project. Go ahead and name your project. I'm gonna say YouTube tu tutorial, wow, tutorial series. We'll go ahead and let that create and move on to the next step. Once your project is done creating, I want you to go ahead and navigate to the APIs and auth section. And I want you to go to, to consent screen, okay? It's very important that you set an email. In this case, I'm going to set my uh, alternative email here, profix at gmail.com. Um, and then you can just set your uh, application's name. So uh, YouTube tutorial series. Save that. It's important you do that first, actually, before you do the next screen, which is credentials. Um, so we're gonna go to uh, create new client ID. We're gonna be working with a web application. Um, let's see. Uh, the next section will be the redirect uh, URI section. And what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, do HTTP local host 8080 and slash off slash google slash callback next we're just going to go ahead and edit this for http this is the origin that the request is coming from so it's going to be from our local host on port 8080 um, so we're going to go ahead and change this to local host 8080 so uh, again, this, this part is the origin that the request is coming to Google from, and this is uh, the response that after Google authenticates the user and gets permissions from them, where Google will send all that data back to at the callback. So we'll go ahead and create the client ID. Uh, it will take a minute or so here, and then we'll go ahead and move on. Okay, let's go ahead and copy our credentials from Google to our application. And so we'll take our client ID paste it in the client ID section and then we'll take our client secret and paste it into our client secret section and then go ahead and save that. Next let's go ahead and set up our route so we can uh, navigate to the Google request and then set up our returning uh, request from Google that route. 
Um, so we can actually just go ahead and copy and paste our Facebook information and then we'll just make some adjustments here. So instead of auth Facebook for the request, it's going to be uh, to Google. And uh, Google, we're gonna use the Google authentication strategy. And our scope is we require the email, but we also require a profile. So uh, these are the things we're requesting from Google. Uh, so we want the profile of the user and we want their email address. Uh, so next, uh, down below, instead of Facebook callback, we'll use the Google callback uh, as our route. Uh, again, we'll change this to Google and these will stay the same if uh, google replies that the user is logged in and is given us permission uh, that's a successful redirect and they'll re be redirected to the uh, profile page and otherwise they'll be redirected back to uh, the home screen next let's go ahead and set up our model for our database for saving a google login user so we'll go ahead and go to our users.js file uh, I'm going to copy the Facebook uh, model and we'll just add one more right below it and call it uh, Google. And then of course Google also has an ID, a token, an email, and a name. And we'll go ahead and save that. Next let's go ahead and set up our strategy. So we're going to go to our passport.js uh, file. Um, and we're going to bring in our Google strategy, the module that we downloaded earlier. So var uh, Google strategy, and that's going to be required. And I believe it's called, what was it, passport Google OAuth. And then we're actually going to bring in OAuth, actually it's capital, to strategy. and that will be uh, importing that library so we can use it. Okay, so next let's create the Google strategy or actually configure it. What we're gonna do, uh, since we did it in the last tutorial, um, we're just gonna copy the Facebook strategy and edit it for to make it personalized for our Google strategy. Uh, so uh, let's change this to Google. Uh, all of these things to Google. And then we're going to use a mongoose uh, module command that accesses our Mongo database to find, um, to, to search all of our uh, users for Google with the Google ID that matches uh, their profile ID that Google returns back to us. So if it finds one, or actually, if it doesn't, if there's an error in connection or whatever, it's going to return an error to our callback done here. If it finds a user, which means that there's already a user with that ID in our database, then that's great. The user is good to log in and we don't need to do anything further. We'll just return no error and return the user to our callback. Otherwise, uh, that user has not logged into our application before. It needs to be added to our database. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new user, new user uh, that we've defined in our user.model. And then we're going to create a uh, new user.google. Let's just change all of these. Let's see, is it control, I believe? No. Alt. Oh, it used to be. Hold on one sec. Okay, so Stack Overflow saves the day. Uh, Sublime multi-line select is control click. Uh, so we can actually control click all of these. And then go backspace and do it for Google. Okay, so now it's saving uh, in our new user google.id, google.token, google.name, and email. Uh, and it's getting that uh, from Google, the profile ID, the access token, um, profile.name, uh, and actually that actually is going to be slightly different as well. Uh, let me quickly look up uh, the strategy for that. It's actually display name. So it's going to be profile.display name. 
Instead, uh, Facebook gives you a first name and a last name, like separated. Uh, Google just returns the display name all by itself. And then we've got everything else. So after we've uh, added that to our new user, we actually have to save it. So uh, new user dot save, and then uh, the callback function only returns if there's an error. Otherwise, uh, it just returns the new user uh, to our ca original callback, which is what we're gonna use uh, for our profile page. Okay, quick troubleshooting here. Make sure you capitalize the G in Google to match uh, we, what we defined it up above. And then let's go ahead and test. Uh, so we're gonna go to a local host. Uh, 8080. Now, of course, we have our Google Plus button that we added earlier. We'll click on that. Uh, YouTube tutorial series, which is what we named our application, would like to view your email address and your basic uh, profile information. We'll click accept. And then, ideally, we would have gone uh, returned to our pay profile page, but we have an error. Let's find out why. So if we read our message here, it says access not configured, the API, Google plus API is not enabled for your project. So we need to go back to our Google console, uh, back to our project and go to APIs. And then under social APIs, we see our Google plus API. All we have to do is click enable. That will take just a second for Google to enable. Then we can go back. Let's go ahead and go back in our application and uh, log in with Google. And there we have it. We have successfully logged in with Google. We got our Google ID. Uh, that's a unique string that was saved from Google. We have our token, our email address, and of course our uh, login name or you know our display name. Uh, so with that said, let's talk about uh, some information, of documentation, some other things. Okay, so the first place to stop is Passport's uh, Google section. Passport JS is Google section, so you'll go to Providers and Google. This has the information that pretty much we've used in this tutorial, um, so I wouldn't expect that you would actually need to reference this too much unless you just want a little bit more in-depth uh, information. Of course, it has information on other APIs, and as far as APIs go, these are the only two we'll be talking about in this tutorial was the Facebook, the local, actually, uh, Facebook and Google, and then, of course, we've already talked about the uh, local login, so we're going stick to uh, stick with those for now. Uh, but other information is available here if you're interested on OAuth. OAuth 2.0 and uh, stuff like that. Um, then if we go to back to our uh, console and we go to APIs, we can click on uh, usage to see how many times we've queried uh, Google or uh, queried their API. Um, there is quotas that you have to follow uh, unless you're wanting to pay. So I think you get, you get 10,000 free requests a day. So for testing purposes, that shouldn't be an issue. Um, if you're looking for more information on the API, you can click on learn more um, and that will bring up uh, some information on how to use the API, what you can request, how you can get it, similar to the Facebook section. Authorizing request over here is how we can get information using Passport uh, specifically. Uh, so you, if you remember correctly, uh, in our uh, routes.js file, we requested the profile and email. Uh, so these are the login scopes. We can request profile, uh, email, and these are, this is uh, additional information about those. Uh, their open ID, and let's see what else. So that's pretty much it. So we basically requested everything but the open ID. Uh, so with that said, this tutorial is finished. Um, in the next tutorial, we'll be talking about basically combining all three of our logins into one, a local login, the Facebook, and a Google Plus, so that any, the user can log in with any of them, and they'll be combined. Okay, I'll catch you guys next time. If you have any questions, concerns, put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, um, and I'll catch you guys next time.